wanted to give you guys a quick little gouache, probably even watercolor tip, but definitely for gouache. And I'm not talking about acrylic gouache. One of the reasons I like gouache over watercolor is I do like the chalkiness. I feel like it's a little bit of a mix of like watercolor or in between watercolor and like acrylic or oil. So in between. I really like gouache straight out of the tube. I like goopy. I really like being able to paint thick and get some good color and paint kind of wet and wet. But because I don't paint in it often enough, I never get that. I always just have dried palette gouache. One of the things I've been doing lately is using my hog bristle oil painting brushes. And it's been a game changer because I can just scrub in those paints that are dried. I mean, I do wet them. And if I'm early prepared and thinking ahead, I'll wet them the night before. I mean, you can do things to keep them kind of squishy. I just don't have the, <clears throat> the time or the energy. But this has been a game changer because gouache will reconstitute. For some reason, gouache reconstitutes better than watercolor. And I think it's probably because it's kind of soft because it comes out, has that chalkiness in it. And I'm not a big like transparent, usually not a big transparent kind of fan. I want some body on there. So that's why I like gouache. But this has been a game changer. And this is a Signet Robert Simmons 40R round. A number three, it really doesn't matter. I, mean, I don't think these are very expensive. I know they're not expensive because I don't buy expensive brushes. I mean, I'm using other hog bristles too. These have like ends, but man, I, you can get a pack of like, I've mentioned this before, a pack of like 500 million for like $1, something like that. They're just cheap and they're like bristly. That's what you're looking for. Something that can like get in there. That's what I'm looking for <laughs> into the paint. Yeah, it's working great. I mean, I'm really happy. I'm probably not gonna go back to regular brushes in my gouache. These, you know, digging in there and doing the duty and they release the paint really good. And you don't have to do like special washing to them. You just rinse them out. Okay, so like this one is the one that I was just digging in. True, I mean, dirt dry. And look at this color with one coat. Yeah, baby. All right, that's my little tip of the day. I gotta get back to painting, but I just wanted to stop, as I always do, and fill you guys in on the tips. You know, always thinking about you guys when I'm in here painting. Totally. Where'd you go, bud? Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Who are you talking to, Mom? Guys, I totally fumbled the ball with this painting. I turned the camera off, I think, to move it, and then I didn't turn it back on, and I did this whole painting. I call basically everything a painting. I think in the art world, that's what we do. I used oil pastels. I started with my water soluble wax pastels, the Neo color and sketched with those. And then you can see where I erase with my brush. That's kind of what's nice about the water soluble ones. I rarely ever use them for like watering or like a water you know, it's like an effect. That's what I'm trying to say. But I do like it because I can kind of erase. I really wish I had captured this on film. I don't, maybe I've got the footage someplace. I don't know. But what I did, I sketched the whole thing with kind of a few different colors. And then I did do like a wash. I kind of just like, basically was trying to kill the white and get a little bit of color around. And then I went back over with my really nice oil pastels, my real buttery ones, the expensive ones. But I left some of the white areas with that kind of water soluble color. And it was a really nice effect. I did two of these because I love them so much. So let me show them to you. There's the first one. Were you able to see like the variations in the white? I'm really, really, really hoping so. 
and then a little bit over here too. I love how this cat turned out. I love how both of them turned out. Okay, so there's the first one. And, and here's the second guy. Oh, I think his little face turned out so good. I never use purple or I don't use purple very often, but I loved it in this painting, the way it happened in the background there or the way I used it in the background. So I'm super happy with them. So for quite a while, I've wanted to be able to do cats better. I wasn't very good at drawing them. I felt like they were really hard for some reason. They just were to me. And recently I thought, I'm going to tackle these stinking cats. I'm gonna just draw and draw and draw them. And that's what I started doing. And I just did them a little bit just loose and wonky. You're gonna see in some upcoming footage. And I've been really surprised how quickly I've progressed with them. I think it just goes to show if there's a subject that you would like to tackle, you've gotta just press through the weird, awkward, this isn't turning out good and just keep on with it because quickly you will progress. Like I'm, I've been thinking about that. One of the things that I don't do very well that I've been thinking about I need to tackle are doing side views of like people and faces. And I thought, I just need to, I, I need to tackle it. I need to do a little research, remind myself like the drawing stuff and then just get on it. These two paintings are up on my website and for sale. I've recently added prices to all my stuff. We're kind of doing a soft opening with sales. Yeah, you can purchase these. They're on my website. Prices are up there. Message me or email me if you're interested in either one of these, but I do love them right now. I just really like having them in the studio. I'm kind of hoping they don't sell because I would like to continue having them as references for other paintings. So up next, I wanted to show you a little of kind of the tackle, tackle the cats, <laughs> how I dealt with just like, I'm just going to crank them out. I'm going to pick a, pick a medium that's really easy and accessible and just do a bunch of them in my sketchbooks and I had a ton of fun. And though they're not kind of in this style, they're a little bit kind of funny and weird. I'm still gonna use those as references for things in the future for like, I've been thinking it'd be fun for like little paintings in the backgrounds of some of my interiors that I'm doing. Like the cats are kind of like this, some of them. And I think they would be cute, like little paintings on the wall. So here is that. Hey guys, I am sitting here drinking my coffee this afternoon and first thing this morning, I could tell my shoulder, well actually yesterday, I could tell my shoulder was not doing well. Happens a lot with painting for me and it's weird because I, I paint and draw with my right hand unless I'm purposely doing this exercise and wanting to use my non-dominant hand. My left shoulder and back area can get really bad sometimes. And it's like once it's stirred up, it's just really hard to do anything with. So I knew I needed to take a day or two or three off. Today's Friday, so I decided I'm not gonna paint today. I'm gonna try not to paint tomorrow. And I'm feeling a little over painting. Sometimes I go through the, these waves of, oh, I just want to draw or I just want to paint or I just need to do this. And I just follow that, I go with it. It's just a good way to kind of fuel creativity. So today I thought, oh, I do really want to create, I want to do something, and I decided I wanted to draw. So I picked up a small sketchbook that I have, one I've had for a long time. It's pretty small for me. It's just a five by eight toned gray paper. And I thought, I just want to sketch. I really want to get better at drawing cats. I have a really hard time with cats. And so I know the answer to that is that I need to practice. So I thought, I'm going to draw with my left hand because I don't need to be doing whatever this is with my right hand that messes this up. I'm going to just draw with my left hand, which is wonderful because I need some looseness. And I pulled up a bunch of Pinterest stuff that I've been saving over the years, either pictures of cats or other artists that have done cats, which I do like drawing from that because then it helps me like just loosen up. I'm just drawing with my left hand. I first started with, thought I would use my ink and my stick, but I was like, I don't have time to wait for that ink to dry. I want to be able to, so I grabbed my Tombow markers and I've just been sketching away. So I'll show you some of those here. I'm going to just sit down here. I've got my coffee and I just want to sketch some more. I'm going to just sit here and grab these markers and I'm just going to sit here, soak up the sun, enjoy the blue sky, and sketch. 
much and just enjoy it. I've got some of these that I'm already really, really liking. Okay, can I show you my favorites? Like, just the looseness you get with using your non-dominant hand. I think this guy turned out good too. These are gonna be great reference material for me when I'm painting and trying to add cats. Some of them have turned out weird, but when they turn out weird, I just do more weird stuff to them. I'm going to see how many of these I can get done today. I'm just gonna spit them out fast and just enjoy it. It's just so fun to do. It's just so fun to just not care and to just play. So I'm gonna spit out a whole bunch of coyotes. That's what I'm gonna do. And drink my Christmas tree coffee. Yes, I still have my Christmas tree mugs out. Guys, I have literally done like 50 million of these cats, so I want to show you a bunch of them. They're in all different sketchbooks, so it's basically going to be like a cat sketchbook tour. Okay, this is in like a really big sketchbook that I have. This is not a cat, but there's that. There's another really big one. Don't crack up too much, but I did several with like teeth. I don't know. I've been into drawing teeth lately. Or I had like a short stint of drawing teeth. I don't know if this counts, but I'm going to just show it to you anyways. It's a big charcoal sketch I did. And I drew a bunch of animals really fast down here. So we have some cats. I have another one here. And again... There are cats. These are done with my wax pastels. Okay, look, here we go with the teeth again. They're so fun. Grady says they're kind of scary, but I think they're fun. Teeth. 
Okay, I've also been doing a lot of cat comics. I've got a couple on my iPad I'll also put in here. I've been doing these with my markers. They've been really fun to do. You know, when you get to put like, what is that called? Sweatband on your cats. And then I just write things that have to do with like them. Why does my life have to be like this? Like that's how Johnny feels about Finn. I'm coming. Where you go, I go. Here's Johnny. Very serious. Does anyone see or care what's happening to me? All right, and then I have sketches like this, which this is my den. But then there's a cat. These are in ink with really big brushes done really, really fast. I think I had another. Oh, yeah. That one turned out really bad. It was still fun. Okay, here's another cat comic. We've got cat cereal. I mean, you know, these are not great drawings by any means, but it's kind of funny how, or interesting how when you squish everything together, it kind of works. And I'm just, you know, practicing my drawing skills and stuff. Okay, that's all for there. Okay, and then in this one, I have a more serious painting. This is in my really nice sketchbook. Took time with this one because I'm getting more comfortable with cats. I've been putting him in my paintings a lot more. And, you know, just playing around with, like, look at that yellow in his face. And then, like, his little hair, little things. So cute. This teal leg. Oh, and the nails. Oh, my gosh. Those are always so fun to do. Okay, let's see. Any more cats? No cat in that one. And no cat in that Nope. And I'll give you a little peek. This is a painting I'm working on that you'll see more about later. Look who shows up. A little kitty. And I'll show you one more. This is another painting I'm working on in the works. And look at this guy. So because I'm getting more comfortable, I'm adding these cats. And I just love how they're turning out. Really, really fun. Okay, guys, I literally just found a whole bunch more. I knew I did a bunch more. These were like super, super, super fast ones. And I think most of these were done with my left hand. I mean, look at the expression on that cat. That's got some great expression. Done with my left hand, super fast. This is one that went really bad and I just kept adding more to it. I love the expression on that and the movement. I mean, look at her like expression. I need to put her in one of my paintings. I like that. I forgot about this sketchbook. I put a little bitty crown. Isn't that cute? Yeah, man, I forgot about these. Oh yeah, I did this one with the marker in my toe. I drew that with the marker in my toe. Is that funny or what? put the marker in my mouth for this one. I think I did this on the Instagram stories. Oh, it's not easy. It really hurts my teeth. Oh yeah, I put the marker under my watch band. If you're not following me on Instagram, maybe you should go do that. All these were all my stories. I mean, all these were done with like really weird ways. Blind, left-handed. I, mean, I feel like I may be boring y'all. Okay, that's all for that one. And I think I've got a bunch in this one. Let me show you these real fast. I 
think that one is so cute. These were done with my color pencils. Okay, that's it. Wow, a whole bunch of cats. Oh yeah, and I also found this guy, this little painting I did, and decided to put my little saying doozy doggy on there. And I mean, this is kind of silly and it's more of a poster-like. It's still just kind of fun to play with. Basically, because I've been practicing and playing, like I just started in my sketchbook, just like doing it, you know, just clopping it in there. And a lot of them are really weird looking, but I got better like really fast. And now I'm putting them in real paintings. Oh, I'm seeing another one over here. This is definitely one that's still in the works, but it's another cat painting. I'm standing on the stool, so I'm up here like near it. I don't, I can't get a good angle. There he is. I probably should take time to go like film that properly, but there it is. Yeah, so I think the lesson is if there's a subject that you really want to do and wish you could do better, just you got to get in there and get past the this is atrocious stage. And I'm finding whether it lasts longer than I want it to or not, it's worth just doing it and yes i'm putting those in my sketchbooks like these are not things i'm throwing away i'm i'm happy with the record of my progress it's really fun to be able to see so i'm just trying to say get out there practice it just just know that there's going to be a horrendous phase but that will pass and then you know like before i know it i'm putting these cats in my paintings and loving how they're turning out and like not even wanting to sell them because they're so cute I ran out of breath with that sentence. I did not realize this was going to be Journey of the Cats, but that's what it's turned out to be. I guess it's Journey of the Cats slash know that there's going to be a horrific phase and just know that it will move past. You'll move past it. Just keep chunking away and it's really fun and exciting as you move like, oh, the next level is it's okay. I thought I'd see if I could get this in the background because it's really pretty with the sun shining through it. All right, close this line. Mm -hmm. I really shouldn't do that in mid sentence be or mid thought because my brain. Oh yeah, so we, like when you're in the horrendous stage and then you like, oh, it's not horrendous. It's still not good, but it's not horrendous. It's really fun to like feel that progress and in those little steps of encouragement of like, okay, maybe I can like get out of horrendous phase if I just keep on with it. So keep on with it. It was a really good lesson for me too. So cats and her moving through horrendous phase. I guess that's what this vlog ended up being about. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you'll go check out the website if you haven't already. And that's it for this week. I will see you back here next week on Bits of an Artist Life. See you guys.